Good morning, good morning, good morning, family of God. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. Let me make sure my audio is good because last time we went on, the audio was choppy, sounded like a robot. Amen. So let me just make sure. Um, so excuse me as I kiss the sky, right? As we say in the hip hop world back in the day. So let me make sure this is all up and running. Amen. So that way we can make sure the audio is good. So good morning, good morning. Today's Friday, so you already know what it is. Authentic Imitationology. This is episode number 49. So should we celebrate episode 50 if the Lord wills it? If we get to episode number 50, that would be amazing, right? Fridays, 50 Fridays of Authentic Imitationology, where we really key in on focusing on how to imitate the most successful person who has ever lived on this planet Earth, the Lord Jesus Christ through his word, we have the power, we have the authority, we have the, the know-how, we have the understanding, we have the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he changed our minds. He didn't brainwash us. He covered us with his blood. He washed our minds clean with the blood of Jesus, right? So we have exactly what we need. Yeah. So it looks like we're good. Audio sounds okay. So let's go for it, right? Let's go for it. So we're going to be... Um, the topic today, we're going to be in 1 John. 1 John is a little book in the New Testament. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. Now listen closely, right? How do you respond? Listen to me closely. How do we respond or how do you respond when the light of God shines on you? The light of Christ, the light of God. When the light of God shines on you, how do you respond? Amen. If you're if you're guilt free or shame free or you have a clear conscience, when the light of God shines on you, Amen, you embrace it. But the opposite applies. If you're not in a right spot with God, right, and you're you're faking the funk like we called it back in the old school, um, and you're not really living the life, you're actually going against the grain, right, um, of the Word of God. When that light shines on you, it's a different story. Amen. But when the light shines on you and you're in right standing with God, you're engaged in his word, you're in relationship with the Lord. Amen. You're empowered. You're reading the word. You're studying. You're applying the word in your life. When that light of Christ hits you. Amen. You should respond in a good way. Embrace that light. And the other question I have is, how do you respond when the Holy Spirit brings conviction to your heart. Amen. And I'm not talking about the old heart that you had before Christ. This is Joanne. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. I'm not talking about your old heart. The heart, the old heart of man is sinful, deceitful, right? It's wicked and all that. That was before Christ. Do you know that you have a new heart in Christ now? So what happens when Holy Spirit God, who lives within every single believer, right? How do you respond when the Holy Spirit brings conviction to your heart? So those two questions we will go through. Amen. First John chapter one, verses five to seven on the morning Devo. Authentic Imitationology number 49. Amen. And um, I forgot to name this on the details, but the name of this one is God is light. God is light. Amen. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or anything along those lines, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. Amen. Here to help you. Amen. And encourage you to read the word for yourself. If I don't have the answer to your question, uh, we'll go into the scriptures and find the answer there. And if we can't find the answers there because we're overlooking something, we'll find someone who could answer or help us answer the question that you may have or comment that you may have. Amen. So we're going to pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out with as many people as we can uh, for 60 seconds on, you know, on your mobile device. You can, you can share the link live. That's so winners with a Z or a G. Amen. You can send them to my YouTube page. DJ Sam Rock is my YouTube page. Send them to the podcast, So Winners with a Z org, and they could just press play. Amen. So many ways that they could connect. And by the way, Cell Radio Network listeners, you are moving. Thank you so much 
for coming to the website. Thank you so much for listening to the player from wherever you're listening to the Cellar Radio Network from. Amen. I see the stats. I'm encouraged by it. Amen. I'm go- and you're, you're positioning um, the ministry in a way that you inspire us to go forward, to reach more souls um, for the gospel's sake. Amen. For the cause of Christ. So let's pray. After we pray, we'll share this out 60 seconds. On the other side of those 60 seconds, when we come back, we'll get into 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. Are you ready? Amen. It's Friday. So it's Friday. Yay. It's Friday to um, get into this word. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for today, for now, for this wow moment, for this now moment, for this word that you will keep us in wonder. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for your powerful love and your grace and your mercy and your spirit, which is holy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have found us where we were, and now you're taking us to where you are. We thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the encouragement. I thank you, Lord God, for the health to my body, strength to my bones. And I pray for every single person that's connected now who will connect later on the other side of the screen, on the other side of this mic, that you would empower them as well, Lord Jesus, that you would give them health to their body, to their mind physically, emotionally, and spiritually, strength to their bones, Lord God, that you will Dispatch, Lord Jesus, archwing angels, ministering angels, warming angels um, to be with us on a day-to-day basis. And thank you for assigning that angel that encamps around all of your children who love you. Thank you for your promises and your word. And thank you for this word today, Lord God, that you are the God of light. In you there is no darkness, only light. In you there is only truth. There is no deceit or lies. And I thank you, Lord God, that the same spirit who rose Jesus from the dead, It's the same spirit that lives within every single child of the living, holy, righteous, loving God. Thank you so much for saving me and saving my family members. Amen. And saving those who are saved on the other side of the screen, on the other side of this mic as well. In Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, that you would do a great work in our hearts and minds on a consistent basis as we seek out your word and search for you and look for you daily in our daily situations So I pray, peace be still in the name of Jesus. And every single person that agreed with this prayer, that agree with the word, that are are trying their best to line up with the word of God, we all say amen, amen, and amen. So let's go for 60 seconds. When we come back, let's share this out. Help me share this out. When we come back, uh, we'll get right into 1 John chapter number 1, verses 5 to 7. I'll be right back. Right, amen, amen. Let's go for it. Authentic Imitation Logic, episode number 49. Sister Joanne says, uh, I just want to share this out with you yesterday. They took my sister's leg off. Uh, she is at Muhlenberg Hospital on the sixth floor, room 16, I hope. And I pray that nothing more happens to her because she does not talk. She does not do nothing. God is still having her breathe. But if they take that... Um, trach out I guess it is she will no longer breathe no more on her own Um, she went through a lot just like me I don't know an answer or anything all we could do is pray for her I ask God please God let her get talking or something or let her know who we are amen Um, we're with you in prayer and wow what a journey for your sister amen Um, you know what if the doctors are keeping her there um there's something about that because usually 
what happens, at least in my experience, when it comes to the whole breathing on their own and all that, they pressure, usually they pressure or, you know, they come to that point that you have to make a decision to take it out or leave it in. But your sister um, is moving the hearts and and keeping people compassionate and keeping people um, loving and hopeful. Amen. So God is using your sister for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. Why he's doing it or allowing these things to happen, I don't know. But I know ultimately God is good, right? And he will allow things to happen um, to your sister in your life and in my life to keep us all humble, keep us all hopeful, and keep us all praying um, for the Lord to respond. And when God, and I believe he's already responding, he's changing our hearts uh, through the situation. So thank you, sister, for the update. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you for trusting us um, in the ministry and this morning devos with, you know, those personal things. Thank you so much for sharing. And we continue to pray. Amen. I'm a prayer warrior, so I pray often. Uh, I pray daily. and I pray often. Amen. Thank you so much. So let's go for it. Um, I'm going to try to put this on screen for listening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for any amount of time, what I do is I do a live stream, a video, amen, and I do a podcast at the same time, audio only. So, you, of course, you won't see the images, but we read word for word, amen, uh, what the image looks like. So, uh, you will not miss a thing, amen. And thank you so much for subscribing to the podcast and listening um, to the audio on Soul Winners with a Z.org, Seller Radio Network. Let's put it on the screen here for those who are watching. Amen. Authentic imitationology. There you have it. Um, wow. Imitating the most successful person who has ever lived on this planet, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This one is called God is light. Can we say that together? God is light. And in him, there's no darkness. You know that, right? He works in our heart to show us who he is. He gives us spiritual eyes to see where he is and who he is and what he's doing. Amen. God is light. In the book of 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, the Bible says, This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. So these are firsthand uh, eyewitness account, right, of people who are with Jesus what they heard from Jesus, what they saw Jesus do, what they heard Jesus say. This is the message we heard from Jesus. <clears throat> and now we declare to you or now declare to you. God is light. Highlight that if you can. If you're reading a, a Bible or a written Bible, or if you know how to highlight on your Bible app, God is light. Very important to know that because we're living in a world of darkness. But God is not dark. He is light. Amen. God is light. And there is no, absolutely no darkness in him at all. So if you find yourself in a dark place, you already know uh, that that dark place, amen, is the absence of God's light. Because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Verse number six. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness, man, that's a word for this season right now. Um, it's so cute how people think that Halloween is not a thing of darkness. Um, in my, in a town near me, in the area that I serve, um, when I do my medical run, I have a medical route. I'm an independent medical courier as well. And um, they had their... Halloween parade, hundreds of people lining up, parents taking their kids, costumes, and all the kids. It's almost like people are getting rocked to sleep in a trance, celebrating the darkest event, at least in the United States, of the whole calendar year, Halloween. There is no light in Halloween. It's only darkness. So that tells me if there's a spirit of darkness covering or inspiring or engaged in the celebration of Halloween, I don't want any parts of it. Why? Because I'll be lying if I say I have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. Amen. 
So we are not practicing the truth if we're in spiritual darkness. You're not celebrating the truth if you're celebrating spiritual darkness. And people say, oh man, you're overboard with this Halloween stuff, Sam. Every year, uh, every year they celebrate it, so every year I must speak against it. How about that? You celebrate Halloween if you're born again, amen. Um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit God is doing his work, but you're probably not listening. And you probably uh, hardened your heart. When you hear the voice of God, the word says, don't harden your heart when you hear the voice of God. So we are not practicing the truth if we go on living in spiritual darkness. Verse number seven. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I know I preached on this, taught on this. We did morning devos about this, cleansing us from all sin. We are made clean. We are made right. We are made new in Jesus. Amen. So choose today, please. You want to live in spiritual darkness or you want to live in the light of God? Right? This is the message that was heard from Jesus and now declared to you. God is light and there is no absolutely zero darkness in him at all. So if there's no darkness in God and we are in Christ, there should be no darkness in our lives. And we don't want to lie about it. If we're in spiritual darkness, then we're lying. We have no fellowship with God. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Powerful scripture from one and evil, man. God is light, period. <laughs> right? In him, there is no darkness or way of turning. Amen. God is the father of lights, and he loves to lavish his children with gifts. His children with gifts. And God is, remember, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then when, you know, he promised us that, or he declared over us as his children of God after we received the Lord Jesus. He has his chosen people and people that he um, engrafted. Like, you know, he put us, we're adopted into the family of God. Amen. If you're born again. And then he said that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Why? Because he, he didn't leave us abandoned here on this planet when he ascended to the right hand of the throne. Right hand of the Father. He didn't leave us alone. He left us one just like him, our comforter, right? Holy Spirit, God, who lives and teaches and guides us into all truth. And he is light. God is light. Hope you could get that in your spirit today, man. Um, time is running out. I know it sounds bleak and it sounds like, man, where's the hope in that? But we're closer to eternity than ever before. One day alive is one day closer to our last day here on this planet. So let's make every second count. Let's make every day count. Let's speak love. Let's be kind. Let's love one another like the scripture says to love one another. Amen. As Jesus loved us, let's love one another. So here comes the convictions, the conviction part, right? And conviction is a good thing um, for our spirit, for our life. So we know that God is light. And I asked the first question is, how do you respond when the light of God shines on you? Whether you're in Christ or not, listen, you have to make a response. If you're in Christ, amen, respond to that light, embrace it. The light of Christ is a blazing light, shines brighter than the sun. But if you're not in Christ and you're still seeking God or you're still seeking truth, and you have not yet put your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord Jesus, then, you know, you could come out of that darkness. Um, God will take you from that darkness and bring you into his marvelous light, the scripture says. Wouldn't you want to live in the light? I know darkness has its own type of power, right? So some people are in the occult right now. Some people are trying to cast curses at me right now, uh, Wiccans and witches. And people who are Satan worshipers, they're trying to do what they try to do. But Jesus, but God, being the light, shining bright, amen, will distinguish the darkness. Darkness doesn't exist 
on its own. Darkness means that there's the absence of light. The absence of light causes darkness. Amen. Physically, or when you see outside, um, it's still dark in my area at this time in the morning because we change seasons, right? We're in a fall season at the time of this recording. Uh, your, t- your part of the world might be light. Amen. What's the difference? Well, the people who are experiencing light right now in the world at this time is because um, the sun is out, right? And the darkness is gone. So the light shines and extinguishes the darkness. But then at nighttime, in your area, my area, uh, the sun is down, right? And therefore the light is gone. So therefore darkness shows up. So darkness can't be (laughs) um, on its own. Darkness is the absence of, the lack of. People live in a lack of, and the enemy, the devil, he thinks that they, he, he convinces them that they have power in that darkness. But they're forgetting one thing. When you're in darkness, you're not living in the light. You're living opposing the light. There's no light in your life. It's a lot to say about light and darkness. The scripture says a lot about light and darkness, but of course, this is the morning devo. I can't get too deep into that. But I want you to think about that. So if you're in Christ, we should be responding to the light of God and embracing it with love and hope and sharing that light. If you find yourself in spiritual darkness, the Bible says, not me, says you're lying and you're not in fellowship with one another. You're not in fellowship with God. You're living in spiritual darkness. Amen. Because if you're living in spiritual darkness, that means you don't have the spirit of light in you. Or you're rejecting the spirit of light. Or you're so used to the darkness. Remember in John chapter 3, the people said, and well, the word says that the light came to the world. And the, and the world hated the light. People hated the light. They wanted to stay in their what? In their darkness. So that way they could hide from, supposedly hide their sins. Hide from God. They embraced the darkness. Some people are just like that. That's why we should, should be prayerful. And kind to people. You don't ever know what people, why people are in spiritual darkness right now. They have their reasons. Um, It could be a whole lot of different things that they're going through right now that they're in spiritual darkness. So here we come shining a light, not even saying a word. And the spirit behind them who is trying to trap them and keep them in darkness don't like that. Um, The other day, the other day, yesterday, I delivered some meds to a patient and... And this guy was a huge, young guy, but huge, man. He was like a giant compared to me. I'm a little guy. And um, you know, I gave him, I was trying to be as kind as I could, but I already felt that he had something, an uh, energy that was different from mine. And you could literally see, I'm not going to go in detail, but I, I know when there's an opposing spirit that I'm approaching without me even saying anything. I'm looking down, doing my thing, scanning the package. And then when I look up, I said, whoa, this guy is huge. And then when I gave it to him, I said, oh, he signed for it. I said, thank you so much. And he mumbled, he cursed me out. He mumbled some things I can't say, I can't repeat. So I just took it at a grain of salt. And I, 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 you know, blessed God. Amen. And I, I silently prayed for his spirit to be changed. Amen. The spirit that was in him, keeping him in his darkness, um, cursed me out. Mumbled like underneath his breath. Right. He told me to get up. The blank, blank, blink, blink out of here. Mumbled it. It's crazy, right? This is where we at. This is spiritual warfare. People take it very lightly for whatever reason. They take Halloween lightly. They take other spiritual things lightly. They take the war in Israel and Palestinians with the Palestinians lightly. They take life lightly. Like if nothing spiritual is going on, right? But when you have eyes to see, ears to listen, amen, um, you will know and be aware. You will be alert. That we have an enemy of our souls, but we have the victory because the enemy has been defeated by the God of light, who is light. The God of grace, love, mercy, the God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere here. Amen. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is um, El Shalom, El Shalom, the Shalom, our peace. Man, God is all of that and then some. Way more than we could comprehend, but yet he reveals himself through his word. He revealed himself um, through the Lord Jesus. Amen. Second question. How do you respond when the Holy Spirit brings conviction to your heart? And this is where I lose a lot of people. Some people don't talk to me as much. 
not because of my own doing. It's because I bring up Holy Spirit, God, in a lot of conversations and the conviction of God. Right. And people don't like that. Some people just want to hear messages that don't mess with their spirit or don't mess with their darkness or don't mess with their sin. But the Bible deals with our sin. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks about sin being a separator from us with God, not God with us. The Spirit's conviction continues even after you become a Christ follower, even after you're born again. You know that, right? The penalty of your sin has been forever taken away. Um, but the pro- but the, the sin remains. In other words, we, we might sin um, willfully or unwillfully, knowingly or unknowingly. Because the sin nature um, is opposing the spirit of God. So there's going to be a struggle with temptation. We went through that so many times on these morning devos. Amen. So we can't deny that. I can't say, oh, you're not going to be tempted no more. Once you're in Christ, I'll be lying. But there are times when we give into temptation and sin. But nothing can compare. Listen to me closely. Nothing can separate us because the love of God no one can compare to the love of God nothing can compare to the love of God nothing compared to the light of God but nothing can separate us from God's love we know that in scripture as well so sin right is is something that really disrupts our relationship with God God doesn't run away from sin He doesn't want to be in the presence of sin. He can't be in the presence of sin. He's a holy God. So what does he do? He shows us a way out to escape from those things that easily entangle us, the Bible says. Our surroundings, we should surround ourselves with a great cloud of witnesses, not a great cloud of sinners, not a great cloud of doubters, not a great crowd of gangbangers. No, surround yourself with, in the light of God. Amen. And if you find yourself surrounded by gangbangers or sinners and stuff like that, that light will bring conviction to their heart. It should do. It should bring conviction to their heart. And if they don't receive it, the Bible says, dust your feet off and keep it moving. He will send someone else. Amen. We're not the end all. We're not the be all. We're not the only evangelists. We're not the only Christ followers out here. So God will send somebody more equipped. If we're not equipped, he'll send somebody more equipped. To do that type of work. Amen. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. When you see yourself in a circle. Right. And you're not being an influence. You're actually being influenced. You're not influencing. You're being influenced. Leave a blessing. Get out of there. And pray that God will send somebody who's equipped. Don't put all that pressure on you man. We're not the savior. We serve the savior. Amen. Brother Robbie Newborn. God bless you. Robert Diaz in the building man. Follow him. He has a great ministry. Uh, for recovering addicts and all that. His testimony is fire and amazing. I know him personally. Um, thank you for coming through. Um, there's a lot here, but I'm not going to get to it. I'm running out of time here. But God is good. So when you sin, you're not rejected or disowned. Because I know the devil said, oh, you sinned. How could you be a Christian? You're rejected now. Now you're, you're not a part of the family. He talks all his lies. But Holy Spirit, since Holy Spirit does not lie, Holy Spirit tells truth every single time, directs us to truth, instructs us in the truth, guides us into all truth. Amen. And he's light. Holy Spirit works in your heart to bring conviction. Right. You're not disowned because you sin. Amen. You just missed the mark somewhere along the line. You got distracted and the flesh started working its way into your life and your lifestyle, your routine. But you're not. Absolutely not. Um, disowned so the Holy Spirit works in your heart to bring conviction which is a good thing amen and hopefully hopefully that conviction will cause you to come to your senses and boy that's my prayer uh, for some people right now um, that they will come to their senses and wake up come out of there amen come out of that spiritual darkness and then get into God's marvelous light so the Holy Spirit's conviction exposes your sin allows you to see your sin and enables you to return home out of there. Amen. That's what I have for you today. What I challenge you today to a good challenge is go to 1 John chapter 1, right? 
and read the whole chapter. We camped out of verses 5 to 7. Before we get off, I want to show you a quick um, guide here. It's a child safety handbook, children, youth, parents resource guide. I have some of these available uh, if you know me. This is a very important book about child safety. Also, 12 seconds here. I have some tickets for a uh, spaghetti dinner benefit. Amen. 10 tickets still available. Amen. Get at me. Inbox me. Um, or if you follow me on socials, I'll put the link up again so you can see what that's all about. But I'm out of here. I bless you all. I hope you have a great weekend. Today is Friday, so you know we have a couple of days maybe to rest or to go out there and preach more of the gospel to more people. Amen. However you see it, maybe you work on the weekends. But whatever it is, it's still Friday. This is the end of the week um, for a lot of people. So the start of the weekend. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God is good. And I lost my thing here. So um, let me get it back. This happens um, weirdly. Amen. I don't want to over-spiritualize why these things happen, but they happen. Amen. So you're dismissed. Amen. Let me just shut this down. Um, so that way on the radio they know that we're done as well. Amen. And on the podcast, I'm going to shut that down too. And then I have to look.